Okay, so in this particular Q&A, what we're going to go through is to how to remove any kind of flickering when it comes to final gathering. So if we just go through this um, scene which I've quickly set up, so we've got a kitchen scene which is illuminated via final gathering through a skylight portal that's come through this uh, window here. So um, this particular sequence has been rendered out over Backburner via these uh, four machines here. So we've got the Pedro Quad and Pedro Render 1, 2, and 3. So uh, the render time isn't that high. I mean, it's uh, about a minute of frame uh, on the Core i7 machines and 138 on the Quad Core machine. So going through this, because we've got uh, relatively lowish uh, indirect illumination settings, um, you'll notice, ignoring the fact that it's uh, scintillating a bit, quite simply because the filtering settings are quite low, also uh, they're quite low down here. Ignoring the fact that it's scintillating on here, you'll notice that the final gathering illumination, which is generated via the GI, um, is flickering quite a lot around the edge of this window and also on the floor and also on this back wall. So just by playing through, you can see it flickering away as it goes from one frame to the next. Now the reason behind that is that it's been uh, calculated independently on each machine so each machine isn't talking to each other so uh, it's working out the calculations on its own so what we need to do to remove this is to calculate the entire thing uh, on one single machine uh, and then save that particular resulting uh, final gather map file that's baked out to disk uh, to a network location and every single machine on the network can therefore call on that and uh, it will render out without any flickering. There's also some additional things that we can do, like for example, uh, interpolate between frames, uh, which is again included within this indirect illumination tab down here. So it's this guy down there once it's once it's enabled, once we've uh, uh, saved out the actual file. So to be able to do this, it's quite a straightforward procedure. So all we need to do is to go all the way down here. Uh, we can actually skip the actual final beauty pass and just concentrate on the final gathering but what we need to do is to distribute the entire final gather process. Now you can, you can actually do it on one single machine, you can actually do it on one machine and its own uh, internal uh, CPU power or you can actually distribute it via distributed bucket rendering which is uh, we'll do it in two stages, we'll, uh, we'll tackle the single machine first and then we'll t tackle the uh, uh, distributed bucket rendering afterwards. So at the moment what I'm going to do, because we don't have any additional uh, animated objects in the scene, it's only uh, a camera fly through, all we need to do is to have one single file. Um, if we had multiple uh, animated objects or even a single animated object, say for example this guy went uh, dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a across the scene or something, or you had some like big red object that flew into into shot, then obviously you would need to calculate a single frame, so um, a single file for every single frame, which is by using this particular procedure here. So it's best for animated objects. In other words, whenever something that comes into the scene, which is going to affect the overall the overall uh, global illumination for that particular shot. So in this particular instance. I think what we'll do is we'll do it for a uh, single file only uh, because obviously like I say we don't have any additional animated objects in the scene we've only got a standard camera fly through and we'll calculate the final gather GI and skip final rendering so we don't need to go through the beauty pass at the moment so the final gather map we need to uh, cache it to disk so at the moment we want to use incrementally add final gather points to map files now what that basically means is that uh, any uh, additional passes, like for example, because we are dealing with a, a camera animation like this, um, the main concentration, the main uh, grunt of the work is going to be done on this initial frame zero. So if we skip forward, like for example, maybe, I don't know, let's have a look, say maybe even frame, say frame 25 or frame 20 or something like that, we can render out another pass because we're starting to get some additional information down here. So if we render it out at every 20th frame, so frame 0, frame 20, 40, 60, 80 and 100, um, any subsequent pass will actually take less time because all the points or all the information is already kind of existed within the file. In essence, it is doing exactly what it says that it does, which is it incrementally adds final gather points to map file. So if there's a point already existing, it doesn't necessarily need to calculate it again. So the first frame will take a little while, and then any subsequent frames, or every 20th frame even, will take a small amount.
Okay, so what we'll do is set this to incrementally add final gather points to map files and then I'm going to specify uh, a location on my drive. I'm actually going to put it on my Z drive, uh, which is there. I'll just go to there and then I'm going to stick this in the net render location and I'm going to put it in there, stick a subfolder in there called uh, FGM. Oh, helps if I actually rename it correctly. FGM, there we go. Okay, and in there, I'm going to call that uh, kitchen uh, FGM file, and then it'll stick the suffix on there dot FGM afterwards. Okay, so because I don't want this to network render, obviously at this particular stage, I can turn that guy off, and then let's say there's two ways to actually do every nth frame. You can either dial it in there, or you can actually pull it down from this sub-menu down here, this little generate final gather map file. Now if you click on this button here it will literally just do whatever you've got set within here. If you do it through here, you can now do current frame or every one third, fifth or tenth or twentieth one. So I'm going to do every t every uh, twentieth one. So it will now blitz through and generate the uh, final gather map for every single every 20th frame, so we've got six of them in total. Okay, so that's the uh, sequence rendered out. Now, uh, obviously it doesn't take that long to do um, the passes when the majority of the points have obviously been you know, added to it. So for example, when we're getting towards the end of the sequence, if we're doing one single frame, sorry, one single file, then it um, will pretty much blitz through it quite quickly. However, if you're using um, one file per frame, obviously it takes the same amount of time as it would do for the for those at frame zero. Now you might think, what about the rest of my machines? If I've got an, if I've got a, a ton of extra machines on my farm, um, what can I do to actually speed up the process? So there's an easier way to do that. Uh, and that's to use uh, distributed bucket rendering. So that's using this distributed render feature down here. So by enabling that and adding the actual uh, additional machines um, to this particular list down here, and I've added three. I'm actually working on the uh, Pedro Render 001 machine. So I've added the other three that I've got av uh, initially available to me. Uh, I need to obviously enable uh, placeholder objects because uh, that's required for distributed bucket rendering and then every single machine will then contribute to the uh, the creation of this map. Now we are now to, we are allowed to use up to eight CPUs and that's eight physical CPUs, it's not eight cores, it's eight CPUs. So um, most of my machines here, actually no tell a lie, all of my machines here have got one single, one single uh, physical chip, one physical CPU Within each, uh, within each, each machine. So therefore, I can use up to eight machines if I, if I if I need to. So therefore, I can use all of these guys in there. So if I want to just go through and let's just create another map. Let's call that FGM uh, distributed file. So what will happen now is when I click render, uh, you'll see that the file gets built up. Let's create the final gather map again every 20th one. And you'll see it initially start to build up and then you'll notice the gap. See the gap there? That is actually the other machines which are uh, contributing to it. So it will take considerably less time now, but it will not take as much. So it won't take uh, as less time as it would do is if you had, say for example, six machines working on it independently, obviously because of the amount of traffic that needs to go across the network and obviously the machine itself needs to calculate um, the information. Okay, and that's the sequence done. And again, it didn't really take that much time to produce in comparison with the uh, single machine working on creating the uh, file or gather map. So, either way you decide to do it, um, it is now baked out to disk so what we can simply do now is just turn off uh, adding points to the file so therefore we can just read file gather points only from existing map files okay uh, by disabling this uh, calculate final gather GI and skip final rendering we now have access to 
uh, the ability to render out this entire beauty pass. So therefore, what I can do now is again either use distributed rendering if I if if I feel like it's necessary to render out the entire sequence. So let's turn on. Uh, I've got save file already enabled there. So let's go back to this guy and let's go back to the final gathering. Sorry, the uh, processing tab, and we'll uh, distribute it. Um, via the distributed bucket rendering method so we've got all these guys, so each one of those is an individual core so I've got um, three core i7 machines and one quad core so I've got uh, three eights, three eights 24 plus an additional four so I've got 28 buckets rendering away over here at the moment so that's churned through quite quickly so that'll blitz through that quite quick or which is an actually even faster method is by doing it via backburner. Now the reason being is what I said previously, i.e. Uh, the uh, network traffic obviously reduces render time overall and also the fact that the actual host machine obviously needs to calculate geometry and it needs to calculate the distribution of maps across the network to each node. So. Um, the other thing is that if you're dealing with a uh, single machine which is obviously slower than the rest of them it's only as fast as uh, waiting for this guy to catch up like for example the quad core that I've got in the network this guy down here uh, is actually slower than these other guys so therefore this guy will more than likely be sat there at the end just waiting for a single bucket to finish rendering while the other machines are just sat there waiting for the next frame to arrive so uh, they will literally just sit there and wait and do absolutely nothing until this guy finishes. So again, bear that in mind. It, it's it's horses for courses. It's it's whatever um, method you feel suits your needs best at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, if you're working on a sequence, then backburn is obviously the way forward to use. Uh, if you're dealing with a single frame, uh, like a print res image, for example, then um, using distributed rendering is obviously the most advisable method. So I'm going to turn distributed rendering off for this, quite simply because I'm dealing with an animated sequence. I have my final gather map baked out. I'll turn that guy off, off, off now as well. Uh, I've got my final gather map baked out. So what I can do now is just chuck out this entire sequence, active uh, time segment 0 to 100, net render enabled, go across to my um, back burner submission submit that including maps okay oh jobs already known so i'm going to just increment that yes i want to overwrite that again this is just for testing purposes sends the job and then the uh, server kicks off and just wait for it to load up a second And here we go. So again, this is just one machine that's working on this now. Okay, and the uh, render's now finished. So the actual total render time on this guy was, uh, again, about the same as before. So it was like about a um, 40 seconds to a uh, minute a frame, depending on which machine was actually being used. Obviously, because we weren't going through the final gather process on each machine, which is what it was on this one previously, so the render time is obviously less. So on the, this particular one it was actually calculating the final gather and the actual beauty pass whereas on this guy uh, it was just actually creating the beauty pass because the final gather map had already been pre-calculated so it saved a few seconds there. So if we switch back to Max and have a look at the resulting sequence, let's just bring this up, okay so I've now got a 50-50 split here so I've got this side here which was the uh, original one prior to baking out and this side we've got the uh, one with the baked out final gather map. So you obviously notice a bit of difference now. You notice that around here the uh, we've got a bit of final gather leaking through here whereas on this side there isn't any quite simply because we have sampled it and added to it and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, incremented, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, to the actual final gather map. So it's actually become more accurate as we've progress through the sequence because more uh, incrementals have been added to this uh, final gather map file. So therefore if I play through it now, you'll notice that I say this is the original one 
Okay, so we've got some strobing, flickering on going on down here, and so on and so on, because it's been calculated independently on each machine. And if we flip across to this side, you'll notice that the flickering has now, well, it's now all gone. You know, in essence, not pretty much all gone. It's actually totally and utterly gone. The only scintillation that's going on now is actually on the uh, tabletop, which is obviously to do with the uh, with the sampling rate with the uh, actual beauty pass itself. So. Um, just flicking back and forth, you can see the difference between the two. Alright, so I hope this has been informative, and um, I'll see you on the next one.